My name is Marianne Anderson and I'm a haematologist. I work here at the Royal Melbourne and Peter McCallum Cancer Centre. I'm a haematologist and my predominant area of interest is in lymphoma and B-cell leukaemias. We have a range of ways of assessing prognosis for patients. Probably the most important and the simplest way of assessing prognosis is actually understanding the subtype of disease that a patient has. So prognosis depends upon whether you have Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's um, and it depends upon the subtype of each of those. Within each subtype or disease subtype, we can assess patients' risk of uh, responding well or badly to chemotherapy. And the way that we assess this is based on the stage of the disease. So a patient in whom there is only one lymph node involved might be stage one, whereas a patient in whom the whole body is involved, and this is often manifest by bone marrow involvement, is said to be stage four. The higher your stage, um, the typically speaking, the less rosy the outlook. So for instance, stage four tends to be worse than stage one. Even within the stage, uh, so within people who are all stage one or people who are all stage four, we can further um, subdivide the outlook based on ri known risk factors. Things that we typically look at include low blood counts, low albumin, a high LDH. So these are all things that your doctor is likely to measure in your blood and you can speak to your doctor about which risk factors you have. Um, beyond those traditional ways of prognosticating, these days we're also increasingly looking at the mutational landscape within cancer cells. And this is helping us to understand some of the more nuanced, uh, some of the nuances of uh, the reasons why some patients respond well to chemotherapy and other patients don't. For instance, a patient with a P53 mutation um, is less likely to respond well to chemotherapy than a patient who does not harbour that mutation. And many um, patients will have sequencing data, uh, sequencing done on their lymphoma cells to help assess that. Beyond um, that, there are other ways of uh, considering prognosis. For instance, a patient who is young with no health, other health issues may be suitable for very intensive chemotherapy designed at curing the disease. On the other hand, a patient in whom um, the tolerability of chemotherapy is likely to be poor, either due to their age or their other health issues, uh, a patient like that may not be suitable for very intensive curative type therapy. And that will obviously play into the prognosis and outlook for the patient. One of the other really key uh, pieces of information that I use when I'm thinking about my patients is how has this patient responded to chemotherapy? A patient in whom the disease goes into remission very rapidly with chemotherapy and then stays away for years potentially, that patient has a much better outlook than a patient in whom the disease is very hard to get into remission or does not stay in remission for very long. So response to therapy is also a key uh, way that we can help prognosticate and understand a patient's outlook. 